Hey everyone, welcome back to Innovation Strategy. In today's video, we're going to talk about organizing for innovation, which is how the structure and the culture of the firm shapes the way it innovates. An organization's size, structure, and culture all influence the way it innovates. The key dimensions of structure that we'll discuss here include size, centralization, formalization, standardization, mechanistic versus organic, and tightly or loosely coupled. With respect to size, large firms usually have larger budgets and reap economies of scale and learning in their R&D activities. However, while small firms usually have smaller budgets, they may also spend more carefully and employee incentives may be more tightly aligned to innovation outcomes. Centralization refers to the degree to which power and control are kept at the top levels of the corporation. Centralization can also refer to where R&D takes place. For example, R&D could be decentralized out into all the divisions of the firm, or R&D could be centralized at the corporate headquarters. Decentralized R&D takes advantage of local knowledge of a product or geographic market. Centralized R&D better enables corporate-wide initiatives and takes advantage of economies of scale. Some firms do both. Now let's talk about formalization and standardization. Formalization and standardization often go together. Formalization is the degree to which firms use rules and procedures to structure the behavior of employees. Standardization is the degree to which activities are performed in a uniform manner. So formalization often enables standardization. Both are good for reliable and efficient outcomes, but not so good for innovation. We say that divisions or organizations that have high formalization and standardization have a mechanistic structure and are oriented toward operational efficiency. On the other hand, divisions or organizations that have low formalization and standardization are said to have an organic structure and are more oriented toward free-flowing adaptation. Ambidextrous firms take advantage of both mechanistic and organic structures. For example, a firm might iterate between different structures over time. Or a firm might have a mechanistic structure in part of the firm and an organic structure in other parts of the firm. Another important dimension of firm structure is whether it's tightly or loosely coupled. In a tightly coupled firm, there are many interdependencies between the divisions, extensive information flow, and lots of coordination. In a loosely coupled organization, there are few interdependencies. There may be only modest information flow between the divisions, and because the divisions are relatively independent, they don't require very much coordination. Tight coupling tends to be good for systemic, company-wide innovation with many shared assets. Loose coupling tends to be better for modular innovations that are relatively autonomous. About 10 years ago, a cartoonist was circulating these pictures of the structures of some major tech firms, and you can really see these dimensions at play. Apple shows heavy centralization with all decisions going up to the CEO. Facebook is totally decentralized with no sign of hierarchy whatsoever. Microsoft is so loosely coupled, its divisions are at war with each other, and Google is so tightly coupled that everybody's connected to everybody else. Company culture also has a profound effect on innovation. Here are some tips for fostering an innovative culture. First, give people from all levels voice in the creative process. You never know where innovation is going to come from, and you want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable sharing their ideas. Second, you want to eliminate norms that require consensus in decision-making. It's important for people to realize it's okay to disagree and that the firm can pursue multiple paths for innovation. Number three, give people time to work on projects on their own. Lots of studies show that people need alone time to most fully explore their most creative ideas. Number four is to lower the price of failure. If we want people to take bold but intelligent risks, we have to show them that it's okay to fail sometimes and celebrate what we learn from those failures. Last but not least, it can be valuable to cultivate a grand ambition for the organization, some sort of idealistic goal. 
For example, curing disease, reducing poverty, or finding ways to utilize renewable energies are all examples of idealistic goals that firms have pursued. A grand ambition that people perceive as noble and important can help rally people to your cause and keep employees super motivated. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe so that you get notified when the new videos come out.